Hello, I'm delighted to welcome so many of you to our AGM. Whilst it's disappointing we can't meet face to face, the reach and level of engagement through the virtual platform is new and exciting. I'd like to start by introducing myself. So my name is Della Money and I'm the current chair of the Board of Trustees for RCSLT. And I'd like to introduce the panel to you. Um, so we'll start with Mary. Hello, I'm Mary Heritage, I'm Deputy Chair. And Anne. Hello, I'm Anne Whitehorn and I'm Acting Honorary Treasurer. Kamini. Hello, I'm Kamini and I'm Chief Executive. I'm Brian. Hello, I'm Brian and I'm the Company Secretary. Thank you. So it's now my great pleasure to formally convene our AGM. Welcome to the 68th Annual General Meeting for the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. As I already said, my name is Dr. Della Money and I am the current chair of the Board of Trustees. The calling notice for this meeting, together with the agenda, the trustees reports and the accounts, the minutes of the last meeting, the notes of the resolutions on which we will be voting, were all circulated to all the full members of RCSLT by email, by hard copy if you requested it, by notice in the bulletin and on the RCSLT website. We also tweeted out the link to the papers to try and make it all the more accessible to our members. When we come to vote, resolutions are passed by a simple majority. We're going to have a test run on the online poll procedure in a moment. We've received apologies for absence from two members, Kate Mann and Lindsay Dixon. And from the Zoom numbers, we can tell that we have more than 20 members online who are eligible to vote. And so I am able to declare the meeting for it. To help you, we've got some simple housekeeping tips. Please will you use the Q&A function to ask questions to the panelists. We will have some time at the end of each presentation and Kamini will keep an eye on the questions for us. However, it is possible we may run out of time or you may ask questions that require more factual detail than we have, can put our hands on in the moment. And therefore, in either of those cases, we will endeavour to get back to you as soon as possible after the event. Please do use the chat function for any technical difficulties. We have staff on hand to help. And the voting will be done via poll. And we're just about to put up a practice poll so you can see how it's done. So our practice poll is, have you had time for a lunch break today? Please vote yes, no, or abstain. Okay, so we can see that 77%, that's great, of our members have had time for a lunch break today. 17% haven't and 5% have abstained. So we would be able to pass that motion. <laughs> okay, so let's proceed with the AGM. The second item is the acceptance of the minutes of the AGM held on the 25th of September, 2019. These have all been circulated and I would like to take them as read and sign them as a correct record. May I have a proposer? Thank you. Catherine Dunnett has proposed and now I need a seconder. Thank you. Rosalind Kyle has seconded. The voting screen will now show. So please can I invite everyone to vote either for or against or abstain in favour of accepting these minutes as a correct record.
Do we have the results? So we can pass this, the majority in favour, and I will sign the minutes on completion of the ADM. Item three is the presentation and consideration and adoption of the trustees annual report for 2019 and 2020. This has been available on the website since the middle of November and was also sent in a hard copy to those members who requested it. We are now going to show you a short video which contains the highlights of the year.
do we have any questions about the impact report? No, we can't. Uh, we don't have any questions about the impact report at the moment, Dana. Okay, thank you then. Um, so we'll take forward the first resolution then to consider and adopt the annual report for 2019 to 20. May I have a proposer? Thank you, Rebecca Palmer. And a seconder? Thank you, Caroline Pickstone. Okay, we now get to vote. Um, for, against, or abstain. Do we have the results? For 92%. Thank you. Uh, we, the majority are in favour and so the resolution is carried. The next item is the presentation, consideration and adoption of the annual accounts and auditors report. I will ask Anne Whitehorn, our interim honorary treasurer, to speak. Thank you, Della. Can we have the first slide, please? Right, we're starting off by looking at the RCSLT's financial objectives. As trustees of the organisation, the board is responsible for ensuring that the charity is solvent, well run and able to deliver its charitable objectives. The overall aim of the RCSLT's financial strategy is to maintain long term financial viability in order to achieve the objectives in the strategic plan. In order to measure performance against this overall objective, the board has approved seven financial objectives, which are shown on the slide. Five of the objecti objectives were met during the year ended the 31st of March 2020, but objective number three relating to the ratio of core costs and objective number four relating to annual surplus were not met. Objective number three is to achieve a ratio of fixed costs to long-term in income of not greater than one to one. In the annual accounts, we reported a ratio of one to 1.09. Uh, that was for the year 1920. Core costs in 1920 were exceptionally high due to one-off development costs and ir irrecoverable VAT associated with the digital strategy project. Objective number four is to generate an overall surplus of between two and 4% of turnover before any major capital investment. Over the medium to long term, it's important that the RCSLT generates a positive annual surplus of income over expenditure. This will maintain the real value of our reserves and put monies aside for larger projects. However, in the short term, the Board of Trustees may decide to approve a drawdown on these accumulated reserves to finance larger projects. In 2019-20, we reported a planned net deficit after project expenditure of £754,000, i.e. it was planned in the budget to do that. This is equivalent to a deficit of 15% of turnover. This deficit reflects continued spend on a number of large projects, including the RCSLT's digital strategy. Our spending plans for 2021 and future years have been reviewed to ensure that these ratios return to target as soon as possible. Right, we're moving on now to the income and expenditure account for the financial year ended 31st of March, 2020. Income totaled £4.8 million. This was £200,000 more than last year with growth in membership subscriptions and commercial trading activities. Expenditure increased by £800,000 to £5.6 million with increased spending on the development of professional guidance, our digital systems and learning journeys. This resulted in net outgoing resources of £800,000. The net return on investments was a loss of £100,000. 
Hence, overall funds have decreased by £900,000. Um, I should point out that loss was around the time of the lockdown and COVID. Um, looking at income now, um, the majority of RCSLT's income is generated through membership fees, which account for 80% of total income. A further 14% of income comes from commercial trading activities, which include the sale of advertising space and royalties earned on subscriptions to the International Journal. RCSLT also generates smaller amounts of income from other sources, such as events and conferences, hire of RCSLT rooms and investments. Now we'll look at expenditure. Our expenditure falls within four main headings in line with our charitable objects. Staffing and other general costs are allocated towards these four main headings. Using this split, 52% of our expenditure, 2.9 million pounds, goes towards supporting high quality services to members to promote best outcomes for service users. A, a further 37%, just over £2 million, goes towards influencing policy and information in support of end users. Expenditure, expenditure related to commercial trading activities is nearly £600,000, 10% of total expenditure. This is predominantly the cost of producing bulletin and members' copies of the International Journal. And finally, £38,000, 1% of total expenditure, was spent on investment manage management costs. We now come on to the balance sheet for RCSLT. First of all, we have fixed assets of £5 million. This includes the building at White Hart Yard, IT equipment, software and office furniture. Next, we have three million pounds of investments managed by external fund managers. Finally, our net current assets, which comprise debtors and cash, less creditors, have fallen by 600,000 pounds to 700,000 pounds. Overall net assets have decreased by 900,000 pounds. Thank you. Um, now, regarding our audit, annual audit, under company laws, law, the trustees of RCSLT are responsible for the preparation of the financial statements and for being satisfied that they give a true and fair view of the state of the charity's affairs. In preparing the financial statements, the trustees are also responsible for assessing the RCSLT's ability to continue as a going concern. The trustees have concluded that RCSLT is in sound financial health and the auditors have no concerns to report. With respect to the 2019-20 accounts, our auditors, Hayes McIntyre, have concluded that the financial statements give a true and fair view of the state of RCSLT's finances as at the 31st of March 2020, and they have given us an unqualified audit report. We're now going to look at some of our spending plans for this current year, 2021. Each year, the trustees review how much they plan to spend on projects to support members and service users, either directly or indirectly. We're planning to spend £414,000 in the current financial year on projects. The table here highlights the bigger planned projects. A full table is in the published accounts on our website. Looking at some of the bigger projects, we will continue to invest in professional guidance for members with £64,000 set aside in 2021. Research and development continues to be an area of investment with £59,000 set aside. A further £17,000 is planned to be spent on developing learning solutions and products for members. 
£31,000 is set aside for the further development of the RCSLT online outcome tool, better known as ROOT. We plan to spend a total of £26,000 on developing our work on inclusive communication and service user engagement. And finally, £14,000 has been set aside to provide public relations support and the development of the communication access symbol. Finally, we continue to invest in our digital development with £156,000 planned to be spent in 2021. Moving on to 2021 membership fees. Membership fees are the single largest long-term source of income we have, accounting for 80% of total income in 2019-20. Looking forward, RCSLT aims to maintain the ongoing level of services offered to members, but at the same time is experiencing increased costs. It's essential that RCSLT retains a robust financial position and continues to meet its financial objectives and KPIs. The Board of Trustees have, has therefore approved an average increase in membership fees of 2% for the year 2021-22. The Board has also approved, and I think we're very pleased about this, the provision of free membership to all SLT students with effect from the 1st of November 2020. This will support student learning during the continued COVID-19 pandemic and hopefully promote, promote continued membership post-qualification. For practicing members, the increase proposed equates to just an additional seven pounds per year. Membership for all categories will be published in the bulletin in January 2021. In summary, RCSLT is in sound financial health, meaning that we can continue working together to provide a voice for the profession and improve lives of our service users. We've now got a, a time for some questions. So Kamini, have we got any questions? We've got a comment about the uh, applauding, um, the fact that students will no longer have to pay. And also a question about, um, uh, I think the hardship of some members due to COVID-19 um, and if they've lost income and if it's the right time to increase fee, uh, fees because of that. Um, we do have a hardship fund, but I don't know if Anne, you wanted to make any other comment on that point. Only that actually, interestingly enough, we, we have awarded a hardship grant recently, and obviously members are welcome to apply for that. It's, it's always been there, and uh, it's a maximum of 500 pounds, I think, and we would welcome applications. So if that's all, then thank you for your attention and I'll now pass back to Della. Thank you so much, Anne, for a very clear presentation. We now have um, two uh, resolutions that we need to uh, vote on. The first is um, the, to adopt the annual accounts and the auditor's report for 2019-2020. Um, may I have a proposer, please? Thank you, Pauline Downey. And a seconder? Thank you, Angela Shimada. You now have got a minute to vote for, against, or to. Thank you. So uh, that's great. We have a hundred percent majority in favour. Um, so I declare that resolution carried. Our second um, ordinary resolution number three um, is about the appointment of the auditors. 
and the fixing of their remuneration for 2021. Um, and so we are proposing to appoint Hayes McIntyre LLP as our auditors and that we do fix their remuneration. May I have a proposer? Thank you. Um, Leslie Cavalli, proposed. And may I have a seconder? Thank you, Francis Johnston. Okay, we have a minute to vote for, against, or to abstain. Um, 93% are for, and we have 7% abstaining. So thank you, the majority are in favour, and I declare the resolution carried. We're now coming to item six, and this is the report of the appointments to the board during the last year and onwards for 2020-2021. The posts being vacated at this AGM, or which were already vacated, have been advertised during the year. Due to the small number of applications, elections were not necessary, and therefore we report in accordance with Article 40, that Mary Heritage becomes your new chair of the trustee board in succession to myself. We'll be doing our formal handover in a moment. Uh, Dr. Sean Pert has been appointed as deputy chair of the board of trustees, and that will take effect as of the end of this AGM. Richard Cryer has been appointed as honorary treasurer with effect from the end of this AGM. Andrea Robinson was appointed as country representative for England North, and she was appointed in January. Rosalind Kyle has been reappointed for a second term of office as the country representative for Northern Ireland. Janet Chambers has been appointed as a general trustee with effect from the end of this AGM. Lisa Chess has been appointed as country representative for Wales with effect from the end of this AGM. And John Humphrey has been reappointed for a second term of office as lay member for digital. So that means that the composition of the board for the period 2020 to 2021 is therefore as follows. We have Mary Heritage as chair, Sean Pert as deputy, and Richard Cryer as Honorary Treasurer. We then have Leslie Cavalli, who is our General Trustee and Chair of the 3PC Committee. And then our two lay members, John Humphrey and Liesl Burrell. Uh, we have five country representatives. We have England North and South with Andrea and Vicky. And then for Scotland, Pauline Downey, Northern Ireland, Rosalind Kyle, and for Wales, Lisa Chess. And then we have a trustee for research and development, which is Dr. Rebecca Palmer. And then we have four general trustees, Anne Whitehorn, Francis Johnston, Angela Shimada, and Janet Chambers. Okay, so the final item of the AGM is the induction of the new chair. But firstly, I would really like to thank you for the opportunity to say a few words as I reach the end of my tenure as chair of the Board of Trustees for RCSLT. In some ways, it seems like yesterday when I accepted the position of chair for the Board of Trustees at the Cardiff RCSLT study day in 2018. In other ways, that day seems a lifetime ago as we face so many new challenges across all of our lives and the lives of our service users, their families and carers. It has been an honour to serve the RCSLT for the past five and a half years as a member of the board initially and then as deputy chair and then chair. Morag Dorwood, my predecessor, handed over a thriving board that had grown under her and her predecessor's leadership and direction. The pressure was on. All boards function best when they are well led, have an inspiring vision, clear governance, 
combined with an ability to learn and innovate and a culture of engagement. The role of chair is not to manage an organisation, but to ensure that it is managed. So the RCSRT board provides high level guidance and a big picture perspective. The depth and breadth of experience brought from past and present trustees is impressive. Thank you to all of our trustees. Their reflections, their honesty and trust has been instrumental in enabling me to be chair in these difficult and very different times. In particular, thank you to Mary for her support, advice and sound judgment over the past two years in her role as deputy chair. I have really valued it. But I would also like to take the opportunity to thank my family, colleagues and managers of Nottinghamshire Healthcare and NHS Trust who have all supported my journey. And I would like to thank our three outgoing trustees who have also given outstanding service. Catherine Dunnett initially joined the board as the country representative trustee for Scotland in 2015. And more recently, she has become a general trustee. Catherine has been involved in various additional roles on top of her board role, from honours committee to leadership mentor. Chris joined the board in 2017 as the country rep for Wales. However, Chris has also been very active with the outgoing outcomes group and I know she wishes to continue this work. This was Caroline's second period as a trustee, her first being from 2006 to 2007. She rejoined the board as a general trustee in 2018 but soon found herself stepping into the shoes of the research trustee whilst Rebecca was on maternity leave. Thank you to you all, good luck and best wishes for your future. Whilst the board may hold the high level oversight, it is the collaborative work on behalf of the board, together with the RCSLT management, staff, members, and people with lived experience that makes the difference. Together, we achieve our purpose to be the professional body that promotes excellence in speech and language therapy. And together, we enable our vision for better lives for people with communication and swallowing needs. And I would like to extend thanks to our patron and presidents for their unswerving support towards achieving our purpose and vision. Thank you to Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Wessex, for her support, attending and presenting at the award ceremony last year and supporting our 75th anniversary activity this year. Thank you too to Lord Ramsbotham for his years of diligent influencing on behalf of people with speech and language and communication needs. His standing and reputation has lent weight and authority to our parliamentary engagement and we are delighted and proud to have him as our honorary life vice president. And we have also been so lucky to have the expertise of Nick Hewer, our president, in a number of key campaigns supporting raising the profile of the profession and our service users in the media. Helping to amplify key messages about the importance of speech and language therapy to those outside of our profession. Thank you, Nick, for raising our profile. Working with our RCSLT senior management team and staff alongside Kamini has been a privilege and a pleasure. Kamini has just celebrated a milestone, 20 years as CEO at RCSLT, which is an achievement in its own right. But it's with Kamini's leadership that everyone at RCSLT strives towards continuous improvement in everything they do, always trying to improve on the last success. They all go the extra mile and it has been a pleasure to work with you all. I would also like to extend a special thank you to Brian Godspill, our Director of Performance and Contracts and Company Secretary. 
Brian is retiring after serving the RCSLT for over 15 years with outstanding commitment, diligence and dedication. Brian was due to retire at the end of March, but he stayed on for a further nine months to support the RCSLD during the pandemic. He's decided now it is time for him to finally retire and focus on his future plans for the next stage of his life. Thank you, Brian. There have been so many highlights during the tenure of my chair. And as inclusion has been the golden thread that has run through my career, last month's launch of the new groundbreaking communication access symbol, giving voice to people with living with communication disability is definitely up there. And we now have got over 700 organizations that have signed up. But I have been so proud and so humbled to see the way that members have stepped up in response to the current challenges and how they've addressed both the health and diversity inequalities faced by our members and our patients. RCSLT are now actively leading on anti-racism and board diversity. Our members put all of our service users front and center and the quality and effectiveness of member interaction in this, our 75th year, has been outstanding. Our members are definitely ambassadors for the profession across all four nations, engaging and leading others, proving that everyone can make a difference. But now it is time for me to hand over the reins. I will continue to be an engaged member driving forward communication <laughs> inclusion and equality for all. But I'm handing over the stewardship of RCSLT to Mary Heritage and Sean Perk, the incoming chair and deputy. I look forward to seeing RCSLT continue to grow under their leadership. And I wish them both every success for their years in office. So my final task as chair is therefore to hand over the chain of office to Mary, albeit virtually. Thank you, Mary, and congratulations. Thank you, Della. So this is the part where I pick up the very special chain of office. Thank you, Della. It is indeed an honour today to accept the role of Chair of the Royal College of Speech and Language Therapists. Della, it's my turn now to thank you for your dedicated commitment throughout your years on the board. We have been very capably led throughout those years, throughout your term both as trustee and as chair. And we've seen our CSLT continue to flourish under your calm and wise leadership. I've certainly watched and learned a great deal from you during those years. I'm so pleased that you'll continue your engagement with our Adult Learning Disability Network and ongoing work with advanced clinical practice and apprenticeships, and as ever, promoting better communication access. You leave a significant legacy for people with communication disability across the UK and your ongoing commitment to communication access is testament to that passion. May I share my own appreciation of Kamini and her team based in London, Cardiff, Belfast and Edinburgh. Each of you makes a unique contribution to our work. You make the considerable responsibility that I'm accepting a real pleasure. I also thank you, our members, for every contribution to our profession throughout this most challenging of years. Thank you to all of our trustees it's recently been a great pleasure to meet the newest board and committee members. Welcome Richard, Janet and Lisa as you join the board. And welcome to Sean Pert. Sean has a significant history of leadership within our profession and I'm really looking forward to him joining the board to serve as deputy chair. It's really encouraging that so many of you have been able to attend this groundbreaking AGM. The first we've held in a virtual space. We originally made plans to meet in Belfast in October. It was a personal disappointment for me that the pandemic prevented this. 
I hope it won't be long before we can return to Northern Ireland. 2020 has been the year in which we marked our 75th anniversary, but a year in which so many of our plans were disrupted. It's worth sharing that the very first AGM, originally planned for October 1943, also had to be postponed, but that year because of continuing air raids on London, rather than a pandemic. The College of Speech Therapists, as it was then known, wasn't formally launched till the reschedule event in January 1945. And 75 years on, our resilient profession has now held our 2020 AGM. May I take this opportunity to tell you a little about myself and what I stand for? That's me looking slightly terrified. I started my career having graduated from Leicester Polytechnic in 1986. I stayed in the East Midlands, working first in Nottingham and then in Derbyshire, where I am now an allied health professions lead. In my clinical practice, I worked with families living with dementia, and I'm very proud of the way this new field has emerged and has developed during my career. Throughout those years, my own aspiration has been for every voice to be heard, whatever the barriers that we need to overcome. I continue to be inspired by the work of all members in clinical practice, research, education, and leadership. Membership of my professional body ever since my student days has presented me with opportunities to develop and to contribute. RCSRT is, I firmly believe, us. The Board of Trustees represents the members and as we govern the work of our professional body and what a, what a fabulous body, a body made up of over 18,000 members, each of us unique. We're growing in size and becoming more diverse in terms of age, gender and ethnicity, though we recognise we have much further to go to fully represent the communities we serve. This year, we're determined to ensure the board too represents those voices. We're already taking practical steps forwards to make the profession and the board more inclusive. Thank you to all the members who are on this journey with us. Reflecting on my own journey, I'm more than a little humbled. As an 18 year old, when I left Essex to start my undergraduate training, I doubt I considered myself privileged. My sisters and I were the first generation in our family to go on to higher education. I didn't have relatives in academia or healthcare to guide my early career. Looking back though, I realize how many opportunities I've had and seized to pursue my education to have a career and a family, and to make a contribution to the profession. Today, becoming chair of the RCSLT, I cannot overlook how privileged I've been. I owe gratitude to so many colleagues that have encouraged me and spotted strengths that I didn't see. I really urge every one of you to mentor someone else who's walking that path. And equally, I encourage you to find a mentor for yourself to help you find those opportunities and grow into your own potential. As the professional body, we have a great deal to celebrate and to look forward to. Technology will no doubt have a greater role to play in ways our founders back in 1945 could not have dreamed. During the next two years, I will be meeting more of you in person, hopefully, to understand more about how we are the professional body for speech and language therapists. So thank you, Della, and thank you, RCSLT, for the privilege of becoming your chair. So, Mary, I don't think anyone else has raised uh, any other business, unless, of course, Brian, you have seen anything come up? No, I haven't seen anything. I think certainly what we are seeing are thanks to Della, and I think we didn't uh, virtually clap Della either to say farewell to her. So I think it would be nice to do that before, Mary, before you uh, formally close the meeting. And then we can introduce the next session as well. So should we clap you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So Della, Della Kamani, thank you. If there is no any other business, then we declare the meeting closed.